Good evening. We'll call to order the City Council meeting, Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, September 20th, 2016. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilmember Clint? Here. Councilmember Manning? Here. Councilmember Demmer? Here. Councilmember Geisler? Here. Councilmember Johnson? Here. Councilmember Wells? Here. Mayor Cook? Here. 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 First item on our agenda is to adopt this evening's agenda. Second. <laughs> Motion by Manning, second by Geisler to adopt the agenda. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. First item this evening is a proclamation uh, for October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we don't have anybody coming from Alexandra House, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So I will read the proclamation. Uh, Whereas the community problem of domestic violence has become a critical public health and welfare, and welfare concern in Anoka County, and whereas domestic violence is a crime, the commission of which will not be tolerated in Anoka County, and perpetrators of said crime are subject to prosecution and conviction in accordance with the law, and whereas over thousands of women and children have and will continue to access assistance from Alexandra House Incorporated, a domestic violence service provider, and whereas domestic violence will be eliminated through community partnerships of concerned individuals and organizations working together to prevent abuse while at the same time effecting social and legal change. And whereas October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and whereas during National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Anoka County organizations will inform area residents about domestic violence, its prevalence, consequences, and what we, as a concerned community, can do to eliminate, eliminate its existence. Now therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of our city, officially proclaim October to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the City of Coon Rapids, proclaimed this 20th day of September 2016. And this would be a good time to remind folks <coughs> that the walk, when is the walk? Walk for Hope. Walk for Hope. This Saturday, the 24th, at Bunker Hills. All right. So Alexandra House's annual Walk for Hope, Steps to End Domestic and Sexual Violence, it will be held September 24th. Yeah, Saturday at Bunker Hills Regional Park in Andover. Andover, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Next item on our uh, under proclamations is the City of Coon Rapids has been presented with an APWA Sustainability Practices Award, and I believe our uh, Assistant Engineer Mark Hansen is here to present that or talk about it. Mayor Cook and members of the Council, I have the honor tonight of representing the American Public Works Association Sustainability Practices Award to the City of Coon Rapids. I'm actually here in my capacity as a member of the Minnesota Chapter Awards Committee. And the American Public Works Association itself is a national organization consisting of thousands of public works professionals from across the country. This spring, the Minnesota Chapter nominated Coon Rapids for this national award based on its historical commitment to promoting sustainability. The award was recently presented to Tim Himmer, Amanda Bednar, and, and Matt Stemwedell at the National Public Works Expo held at the Minneapolis Convention Center on August 29th. I'd like to recognize Colleen Sinclair, Amanda Bednar, and Stephanie Ring for their hard work on the award application. Further, I'd like to recognize the following members that are here tonight at the, of the City's Sustainability Commission. Uh, that's Rebecca Homeland. Ed Deedman, Chris Back Backes, Marisha or Marsha Bodino, and Tim Lockram. Just a little background regarding the award itself. 
Judges considered three categories in determining the award winner, economy, economic development and financial stability, community, education, safety, enjoyment, and livability, and environment, pollution, prevention or cleanup, natural resources use in conservation and energy efficiency. Thank you to the Sustainability Commission and the City Council for your outstanding leadership in making the City of Coon Rapids a nationally recognized city for sustainability practices. And with that, I will represent the award plaque to Colleen Sinclair, Amanda Bednar, and the members of the Sustainability Commission, if you would come up here. And Mayor Cook, if you would be so kind as to step down, we can take a photo. And if everybody come up to the front here. This is everything. We get Where do you want to Where do you want to Right in the middle. Oh, oh, nice. There you go. You get the rabbit ears on the right. <laughs> department out there, an impressive commission. Now. Oh, all right. Next on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the September 6th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Well, second by Clint to approve the City Council meeting minutes of September 6th, 2016. Any Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And those are approved. Next is our consent agenda. Sorry, I was distracted by a couple things I had underlined. There we go. Um, the first one on our agenda is to accept release of a regulatory agreement. And it's no surprise that was submitted for Dave Brody, city attorney. That really sounds like an attorney thing. Um, in 1985, a regulatory agreement between the city of Coon Rapids, First Trust Company, and Margaret Place Limited Partnership was executed in connect connection with the issuance of revenue bonds for the construction of housing on the Margaret Place property um, the bonds were paid off when the property was refinanced in 1997, but the regulatory agreement was never released by the parties. This came to attention during a more recent refinancing. Since the obligations under the regulatory agreement have been met, um, we are looking at re being, releasing them by the city, the release being executed by the city. Oh, that's a consent agenda, so I'll go ahead and read that. It's waiting for a motion. Uh, so we'll be authorizing execution of the release of regulatory agreement between the City of Coon Rapids, the First Trust Company, and Margaret Place Limited Partnership. And the next item, we only have two items on our consent agenda, is to adopt Resolution 16-103 to accept the 2017 grant for a full-time DWI officer. Uh, Chief Wise, if you want to kind of just address that a little bit. Yeah, Mr. Mayor Council, thank you for asking because it gives me an opportunity to tell the citizens what a, a benefit this grant program is from the state. Is that in 2015, uh, the City of Coon Rapids applied to the Minnesota Office of Traffic Safety for a grant to fund a full-time officer dedicated to performing DWI uh, enforcement in our city. Uh, since that time, uh, we've had an officer dedicated for that purpose. And uh, this is simply a renewal of that grant as they only make the funds available for a single year at a time. Uh, but the bonus for us is, is that we're able to have that officer do that to address um, traffic safety 
Uh, unfortunately, 2015 traffic fatalities were up in the state of Minnesota. And uh, unfortunately, Anoka County has the dubious distinction of being the uh, second highest in fatal accidents, and we gotta do something about that. So um, with accepting this grant, we'll continue to fund that officer who's working hard, uh, especially on Highway 10, um, but in everywhere in Coon Rapids to make sure we get these impaired drivers off the road. Excellent. Can I say something for officers of the law? Um, I not, think not right now, sir. Thank you, though. <laughs> that's, that's not I mean, how these meetings work. Well, and nobody can hear you anyway because you don't have a mic there. But so. it's respectful of them. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, perfect. Because uh, yeah, we got our it. Okay. Are Thank you, sir. <laughs> so that's all we have on the consent agenda. Um, motion to accept. <laughs> I'll, I'll move to accept the items Thank on the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler to uh, to approve the consent agenda. Any, any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And those are, items are um, adopted. Next on our agenda is item six, which is to consider adopting resolution 16-91, establishing a housing improvement fee for Creek Meadows Two Homeowners Association. Um, is there anything, Mr. Brody, that you want to cover before we public hearing? It, before I reopen the public hearing, just a couple things that would ask that you would reopen that public hearing. It was published. Um, we did look, and I think a couple of questions were whether there had been bids on this particular project, and there had been bids. Miss Leggett had had those bids and has, has seen those bids. Obviously, ultimately, it was the uh, association's responsibility and decision to pick whatever contractor that they did choose and whatever bid. But we did review that. They've submitted all the other materials that were requested. And so we would ask that you reopen the public hearing, conduct that hearing, and then proceed from there. Okay. Any questions of council before we reopen the public hearing? Okay. Um, then with that, in the matter of the um, considering adopting the resolution establishing a housing improvement fee for Creek Meadows Two Homeowners Association, I will uh, reopen the public hearing. And that is open if anybody is here to address council on the Creek Meadows to Owners Association. I have a question. Okay, can you please approach the mic and sure. the podium and give us your name and... My name is Catherine McHugh and I'm on the board of Creek Meadows. I've lived in the community for 13 years. And, um, I was wondering, uh, I know that we had to have some additional material brought forth um, regarding the um, reserve study. That's my understanding. Um, the question that I do have is, can the homeowners waive the last 45 days to go ahead? Is that possible? Um, Your Honor, um there's a couple options that will happen tonight. If the council does adopt the resolution, we will send out a notice to the each property owner within the association. There's sort of two different ways it could go. If up to if 45 people, 45 percent of the people object to the resolution, then this resolution will not become an effect. On the other hand, if 55 percent of them agree to waive that 45-day waiting period, then the project could proceed before those 45 days. If sort of neither of those are achieved, we don't get enough of the 55% or enough of the 45%, the resolution will just become effective after 45 days. Okay. So it really becomes up to the association if the uh, resolution is uh, grant or is approved tonight of how it will proceed after that. Yeah, that, that okay, sense, yes, That's thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else to address council in the public hearing on Creek Meadows Two Owners Association? All right, well, hearing none, we're going to close the public hearing. And we have a comment to council. Motion. Can I say now about the police officer? No, sorry, sir. <laughs> I respect the police officer. Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 16 91 
imposing improvement fees in the Creek Meadow 2 Owners Association housing improvement area and providing for the collection of the fees. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Clint. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. So as long as 45% don't um, object. object, it's going to go forward in 45 days. Where if 55% say we want to waive the 45 days, they can go with, without the 45 days. Correct. Okay. Can I just ask a clarifier for the vote? Sure. 45% of owners or 45% of units? Of owners. So if there's I'm sorry, of units. So, units. Be so 20, each unit gets a vote. Yep. Twenty units would be I don't know what the is for the fifty five percent, I know the forty five percent is twenty units. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're under old business. And item seven is uh, planning case sixteen dash eighteen, consider adoption of resolution sixteen dash ninety nine for the land use change from high density residential to office 10110 Woodcrest Drive, uh, and that's currently the Spirit of Grace Church. This was introduced at the last meeting. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, Denver. All right, uh, I would like to move uh, adoption of Ordinance 2178, approving a zoning change at uh, 10110 Woodcrest Drive. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Johnson. And um, Eric? Yeah. Councilman yeah. Manning. There's, um, I'm confused. Wrong, yeah, I'm, um, I'm confused in the numbers. Oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have the wrong one open? The two look the same, sorry. <laughs> 1699 land use change from high density residential to office at 10110 Woodcrest Drive. And I'll Thanks. second that. Yeah. Okay. Motion by Demmer, second by Johnson to approve resolution 16-99, approving the amendment to the city's comprehensive land use plan to change the land use designation from high density residential to office based on the following. The proposed comprehensive land use amendment is compatible with the adjacent comprehensive land use designations and land uses. And two, the proposed comprehensive land use amendment will not have any adverse impact on the adjacent properties and three, the proposed comprehensive land use amendment is supportive of the comprehensive land use plan, land use chapters, goals for the city, including maintaining a complete and balanced neighborhood by including a variety of supporting commercial development and maintaining a climate that encourages redevelopment and ongoing business activity. Uh, discussion? Your Honor. Uh, Council Member. As I said when we first introduced this, um, you know, this is in, in my neighborhood, and I think this is a very reasonable, you know, it's right off of uh, Woodcrest Drive there, and everything on the other side of the road is a business, and this is the only access off that side of the road, and it's segregated from the rest of the neighborhood, so it makes sense to me. The church is there. The church will probably stay there, and if it didn't, an and office would make sense, too. So. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, sing divide by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And now we need to look at adoption of ordinance 2178 approving a zone change for that same property, 10110 Woodcrest Drive, currently operated by Spirit of Grace Church. Can I try again? Yes, of course, <laughs> Council Member Demmer. All right, I would like to. Uh Move adoption of Ordinance 2178, approving a zone change at 10110 Woodcrest Drive. I'll second that. Uh, motion by Demer, second by Johnson. Um, Mr. Brody, do you want those following findings read? If you could, please. All right. So we have a motion and a second to approve the attached Ordinance 2178, approving of the proposed zone change based on the following findings. One, the proposed rezoning to office is consistent with the land use designation of office. Two, the proposed rezoning is compatible with the adjacent land uses and, and zoning. Three, the times and conditions have changed so that a reasonable use of the property cannot be made under the current zoning. And four, the proposed zone change would not have an adverse impact on the area. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, next on our agenda is another one that was introduced at the last meeting. Consider adoption of Ordinance 2179, approving a zone change to general commercial uh, for 2437, 2423, and 2405 Coon Rapids Boulevard. Yeah. Council Member Manning. In the planning case 16-21, I uh, move adoption of Ordinance 2179 based on the following findings, and I might as well read them since you'll make you read them anyway. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the proposed rezoning to general commercial is consistent with the land use designation of general commercial. The proposed rezoning is compatible with the adjacent land uses and zoning. The times and conditions have changed so that a reasonable use of the property cannot be made under the current zoning. The proposed zone change will not have an adverse impact on the area, and five, the proposed sir. rezoning is consistent with the Coon Rapids Boulevard Framework right. Plan and River Rapids Overlay District. Thank you very much. Second. Motion by Manning, second by Geisler. Any discussion? Your Honor. Uh, Council Member Just Pente. a clarification question. On the, um, our notes that were sent out in this kind of a table and it has different letters of what's um, permitted in different areas. I'm assuming that the GC is general commercial, which is what we're looking at now. Is that correct? So those are the ones, those are the different businesses that could go in if we change it, where it says GC. That our, the part that our G. C. Is that Sandy general commercial? commercial? General table. commercial, yeah. Okay. GC. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And number 10 on our agenda this evening is in planning case 16-20, consider adoption of resolution 16-100, land use change to general commercial, same parcels, 2437, 2423, and 2405 Coon Rapids Boulevard. Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion in planning case 1620 to approve resolution 16-100 approving the proposed land use amendment based on the following findings. One, the proposed amendment is consistent with the comprehensive plan in that it promotes the improved appearance and function of Coon Rapids Boulevard and will promote the revitalization of an underutilized site. Number two, the proposed land use amendment is compatible with the surrounding land use designations and land uses. Three, the proposed land use amendment would not have an adverse impact on the area. And four, the parcel fronts on a Coon Rapids Boulevard, um, which is a class A arterial street. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item 11 on our agenda is to consider adoption of Ordinance 2180, restricting parking on El Dorado Street Northwest. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. I would like to make a motion to approve an amended uh, ordinance that would establish a parking restriction on the west side only of El Dorado Street, south to a distance of approximately 100 feet. So that would be, in, instead of no parking on both sides, it would be just no parking on the west side, basically between the boulevard and the driveway into the apartments. Right. All right. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Motion by Johnson, second by Wells. Um, is there, and that's, that's significantly close enough that it would be okay from the introduction. It's okay to go ahead then with the adoption. Okay, Council Member Clint. Can I ask why you would like the change? So I've heard from some of the landowners that are over there, um, uh, one in particular that owns uh, some of the multifamily housing that are there, and, and he has requested um, the opportunity to have some parking along the street in that area and not to fully restrict it, 
I've listened to the chief and, and to uh, others in connection with this as well, but I've also been out there several times and, and um, uh, toured it, and in particular toured it during a time in which we, the city, restricted parking out there, and we restricted it only on one side, and that seemed to be sufficient. So those are the reasons. Your Honor. Councilmember Clinton. Can I ask our public works director to weigh in on this? Well, I was going to make a, a statement that um, if this goes forward, west side only, um, what we're really saving is about three parking stalls because there's no parking directly across from this driveway in, in concern. So you're going to leave an island of maybe two to three vehicles between Coon Rapids Boulevard and that location. And, and that will come down to enforcement and interpretation of the ordinance, but um, just moving it to one side versus the other, in my opinion, doesn't gain very much. But if that alleviates some parking concerns for individuals and we can still maintain this um, for emergency vehicles and, and clear that intersection, uh, I, I could live with that. Yeah. I just have a hard time because, you know, we're proceeding and we know about the expansion to Mercy Hospital. And that's going to be the main thoroughfare, not only for the emergency vehicles, but for everybody. That's no, we're talking, no, this is not. El Dorado no, Street. No, it is not. We're not, oh, we're not talking Dakota Street. No. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I got to mix it. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. All right. So now let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess. Item 12, consider adoption of ordinance 2181, restricting parking on Dakota Street. And this is the one where the proposal came uh, about from the police department regarding on-street parking in the area. Um, uh, this has been reviewed by the traffic <laughs> review committee on July 12th. July 29th, city staff sent a letter to property owners requesting feedback. Um, staff received no objections or comments from area property owners. An ordinance was introduced by council on September 6th. And now we are looking at adopting the ordinance restricting parking on both sides of Dakota Street from Coon Rapids Boulevard south to 116th Lane. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. I would uh, make a motion at this time to adopt the ordinance restricting parking on both sides of Dakota Street uh, Northwest from Coon Rapids Boulevard South to 116th Lane Northwest. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Wells. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. All right. We are now up under new business. Consider adoption of resolution 16-102, amending the budget for police projects. And this just sounds like something the Chief Wise ought to bring us up to speed on. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll just give you an overview of uh, what we have in mind. For the project, but I'll, I'll start off by highlighting that the, um, the a funding stream that we're talking about for these particular projects come from uh, vehicle forfeitures or drug forfeitures, so it's not tax dollars. So with that is that the two projects we have in mind are, are one, um, the police department uses a building at Public Works for the storage of large evidence and for motor vehicles. There's a portion of that um, building that's heated. We use that heated portion to store um, the more valuable vehicles that we might see is we also use that heated portion to do evidence processing. So in the wintertime, if we seize a car and we need to do fingerprinting, is that we'll put it in that garage in order to do that. Is that we saw an opportunity to expand the size of that heated space to add a, a third purpose to this vehicle storage and the evidence processing, and that third purpose would be for um, defensive tactics training. Is that we've never had a facility for the... Um, for the physical, we call it defensive tactics, but it's the physical training the officers go through multiple times throughout the year, de-escalation, how to arrest people, those sorts of things. And um, if we move the wall out and sealed the floor up, it has some grease and oil from vehicles being stored on it over the last 15 years, is that uh, we'd be able then to put our, our wrestling mats down 
for the three times a year that we need a space like that to accomplish it. So by spending some money, it allows us the opportunity to have that space uh, as part of city property. The, the, the other key part of it is, is that we need it to be behind a fence uh, because when the officers do that training, they're not armed. They, we don't allow them to bring firearms or, or pepper spray um, while they're doing that sort of training. So it needs to be a secured area and it, it winds up to be a great place for that. The second project we have in mind is, um, is the technology piece that's tied to some of the remodeling we did in the police department last year and basically to reflect that um, in 2016 we're now more technology based than we were when the building was built in 1996 where we were pencil and paper law enforcement is that we um, expanded what we call our roll call room but it's also our emergency operations center and other than a 15 year old television there's no technology in that room at all right now and um, we we as Anoka County have um, Actually, I was tempted to do a bunch of uh, acronyms for you. The new PSDS system, which runs our <laughs> CAD, FBR, and RMS. Um, uh, the layman's version is that, that the county spent $8 million to collect data from 911 calls for reporting, for mapping, all sorts of things. Super powerful software that operates this public safety data system. The technology upgrade we're talking about is about uh, installing monitors and um, interactive workstations that allow all that data to be used and utilized. And um, the, the, the primary focus of that will be that emergency operations center. And the purpose of that space is in the event of a natural disaster, for instance, uh, you know, knock on wood, we won't have to use it for that. But um, it's the place where um, city staff would go, the mayor would go, and, um, and where we would work our way through any disaster that might happen in the city. What about the council? <laughs> <laughs> we, have and we get to go with the wrestling mats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, it, it, but it's basically, it's, it's to get some technology to make good use of that data. And um, I've discussed these projects at length with uh, Mr. Stemwettel, and, um, and I think he would agree by bringing it forward to the council that it's a good use of the funds. All right, thank you for that, Your Honor. Councilman Johnson? Especially since this is a, a very appropriate use of forfeiture funds, I would uh, move to authorize resolution 16-102, amending the 2016 Law Enforcement Programs Fund budget for these purposes. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Demmer. Discussion? Mr. Stemmettel. Uh, Mayor and Council, I had my hand up, but as Mr. or Councilmember Johnson just uh, alluded to, this is really an appropriate expenditure of, of these funds. In fact, it's limited in terms of the types of uses, um, and this fits perfectly in line with what those uh, prescribed uses are. So uh, from that standpoint and from the standpoint of uh, upgrading the technology down there, I think it makes a lot of sense. Your Honor, I wonder, Chief Wise, if you're going to update the electrical, because the Y2K scare that we all waited up for. The only problem we had, we had so many crock pots for food that we blew certain. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait another thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion. Next one is to consider a proposal and a letter of engagement for engineering services for 2017 well rehabilitation program. Mr. Hammer, try and make this as exciting and compelling as Chief Wise's story. <laughs> John, can you help me out? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is our um, proactive maintenance of our system. Taking our 24 wells and our nine boosters and splitting them into an eight-year rotation and just making sure uh, we're looking into what possibly could be on the horizon, uh, addressing issues as they are minor and before they're catastrophic failures and we look at uh, major, major costs to do that. So uh, we're starting into a new cycle under this program, introducing the booster stations to that rotation. And um, I, I will point out that we point out the budget is there. But this is the budget for 2017. So while it has not been adopted, it's not under the general fund, it is an enterprise fund. Uh, we're moving forward tonight authorizing 26,450. Um, 
those plans and specs, whether the budget goes forward or not, could always be carried forward. But this is kind of spending 2017 dollars because we want to get to these and get them back in service before that uh, summer rolls around next year and pumping increases. That, thus, the desire to get out ahead of it. Proposal for engineering services for the 2017 well rehabilitation program from Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated and authorize execution of the letter of engagement in accordance with their proposed date, August 29th, 2016. Second. Motion by Demer, second by Manning. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. That was a very compelling story. Thanks, Mr. Glad. Thank you. <laughs> um, item 15, consider proposal for engineering services for 2017 sanitary sewer lining program and author ex authorized execution of agreement. Um, so I do have a question on this, Mr. Hammer, and it says, the city is continuing the lining program for the sanitary sewer system that began in 2008. The program will be complete upon finalization of this project Lining will be done to complete all remaining trunk sanitary sewer main segments located in the city. So if we change this now, because originally we were just going to be televising this and come back and coming back and doing these in the future when we thought necessary. But now we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we got back the results of the televising in about 65% of those uh, areas that had been televised in 2008. So now we're eight, nine years later. So there are uh, root intrusion in some areas, sags in some of those pipes. Um, we could certainly attack those 65%, but then that number, that length starts to get less and less and you start to pay a higher premium. So one of the thoughts we had is, as you can tell by the map that's attached, they're, they're dispersed all over the city. Um, I've been going through this map over the course of the last week and some areas are in the Port River Walk, so maybe those don't make sense. Um, there are areas that are in recon areas that we may address in a different matter. Um, what this does is identifies all pipe that's made out of clay that has not been lined to date. And to me, at 65%, I think we attack it all, pull out the pieces that may not be necessary because of future development or, or items we're gonna reconstruct. But I think we, we take it as if we were going to year 10 and we'd be done with it once and for all. So that's my recommendation. So if we move on with this as proposed, when this is done, we'll be done. We'll be done with all clay pipe in the city, all the mains. There are still going to be services on individual homes. Those are not our responsibility. Oh, no, 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 yeah. But as it relates to the mains, all clay pipe will be handled uh, following 2017. Okay. Thank you. Council? And again, I will point out, Mr. Mayor, this is a 2017 budget item. Uh, 65, 820, um, we're kind of spending $2017 again to get out in that bidding environment and get the work done in the summer uh, so we don't end up like we did in 14 with a lot of freezing temperatures and not completing that program. Okay. Demer. So just looking at the map, um, there's a whole bunch of these that are really long and they make sense, but then there's half a dozen to a dozen that are one lot long or shorter. Um, is that is that really true? Is like one 30 foot run of clay pipe and it's connected to not clay pipe or it just didn't get lined yet? Or does it make sense to go to those places and line those little tiny short ones instead of replacing them? Or yeah, I'm just, just curious because like I said, most of them totally make sense, but some of these short ones I, I just wanted to double check on. Yeah, Council Member Denver, we look at every segment, manhole to manhole, uh, is really what we look at. So there are some uh, for example, Northdale and Crooked Lake. That program was being done at the same time the county was reconstructing that area, so it got to be too busy. We weren't able to address that specific intersection, so oh we're going to come back and do that. <laughs> I didn't even notice that little there, dot. There, there are, there's a dot up at Bunker, uh, at Bunker Hills that I'm not sure what that is, and that's where I... <laughs> the kickoff meeting is going to come in and we're going to sit down and we're going to identify which manholes and which structures structures they are. Uh, you know, I'm looking at Zeon Street, which we just reconstructed this year. and um, But the good news is none of this really involves 
uh, significant excavations. There are a few areas that have been identified for potential um, excavation and remedial. None in these areas, thank goodness. Uh, but yes, there are. these are the ones that are extremely deep or there's a couple of drop structures or there was something else occurring at that time that we weren't able to get into this area without causing issues uh, on some other project. Uh, I'm, I know that that's another reason why I want to kind of group it all together again because when you start bumping around, jumping around the city like this, um, costs start to go up. But we're at a point that I think we're looking at about six and a half miles in total here and that's that's still a good program. If we were down something less than that, we'd really be paying the price. So we'll develop the specs, we'll eliminate what's gonna, gonna come out and gonna stay, we'll um, get it out for bid, and we'll see where the numbers come at. I, I know we're gonna have more money um, budgeted for it than what the improvements are gonna be. And that's why we kept that as a placeholder in the budget for next year. All right, thank you. Your Honor. Council Member Manning. I'm gonna make a motion. Uh, I move, uh, Adoption by the City Council to accept the proposed SEH for engineering services for 2017 sanitary sewer line program and authorized execution of the letter of engagement in accordance with the proposal dated September 8, 2016. Second. Motion by Manning, second by Clint. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. All right, we are now at the open mic portion of the meeting. Anybody here to, are you here to address Council? No? All right, well then I'll save reading that introduction. <laughs> then we'll move past open mic. <laughs> now would have been the time if somebody would have had something they wanted to offer that was wonderful <laughs> about how great our law enforcement is. Would have been a perfect time. All right, but instead we will move to reports on previous open mics. We don't have any other business. Other business. What do we have, Council? Mr. Piper. Mr. Piper. Mayor, Council members, currently we're accepting applications for paid on call firefighters. We'll be having a test shortly. The application period closes next Monday, which would be September 26th at 4.30. If somebody's interested, they can uh, complete an application online. Also tomorrow night, which is September 21st, from 6.30 to 7.30 at our main fire station at 1460 Egret, which is Egret and Coon Rapids Boulevard. We'll have an open house from 6.30 to 7.30 at night for anybody to get a little bit of an idea what it's all about if they're interested. So just wanted to pass that along. Excellent. That's um, As long as we have focus on you, I want to say thank you again for um, the 9-11 display that you had on the Main Street Bridge. It was really, really nice. I had people from out of town coming by, and they were just amazed that it was there. It was really nice. Your Honor. So I might just echo that. I want to thank uh, Chief Piper and all the members of our fire department, but also the fire departments in Anoka and Ham Lake who also came out and participated. Um, it was a wonderful display. I've, I've received just a significant number of expressions, not only kind of of patriotism, but also of um, People who live in other parts of the state who were driving through went out of their way to tell me how magnificent our community looked at that point in time. And it was really special because we also had a truck there from New Jersey um, that was actually present uh, during the 9-11 event. And so that was kind of a moving event. I also wanted to, because I was there uh, both in the morning and evening, especially in the evening when they took down um, the flag, the big flag over the, the highway, um, TAPS was played and, and there was a particular volunteer who without any fanfare showed up, his name is Tim Blotz, he's an anchor and a reporter with Fox 9 and he played TAPS um, as a volunteer as that big flag came down and it was a pretty moving event so thank you to Mr. Blotz for doing out doing that and volunteering your time without anybody really knowing about it. So. And this year was the first year they added the 9-11 Remembrance Car Show over at Lowe's parking lot. And they had the 9-11 uh, the um, presentation over there and the tolling of the bell. They did that in the afternoon and that was very moving. Yeah. It was just an all in all just an amazing day. 
and I and it just literally blew up on social media. Yeah. I mean, it just I I loved I loved being affiliated with Coon Rapids. It was just it was a point of pride, and it was very nice. It was well done, Chief. Chief. Uh, Mayor, Council Members, just for if you want to plan ahead, uh, my understanding is is Dan Hansen, who's uh, who coordinates everything up there. Is talking about doing a big deal again, uh, like we did at 10 years. Some of you know, at 10 years, we did the big deal at the high school. Uh, he's looking at doing the same at uh, 20 years, so five years from now, uh, they start to talk about planning something big at the high school again. So, you want to put on your calendar? Yeah, that was, uh, was you know, in multi communities. Dan Hansen it's from Champlin, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Champlin Park and or Champlin and Oka, Ham Lake, and over Ramsey. I mean, it was all the fire trucks, it was awesome. What was particularly amazing about it is to stand on the bridge and look down, and every vehicle that went by was waving. I, it was blowing the horns. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what else do we have coming up? We've got the uh, pet thing Sunday. Love my pet fair. Matt, you get the you had a list. I I, I pulled it up. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Mayor and Council Members, uh, this Saturday the twenty fifth from ten to two at. Riverview Park is the Love My Pet Fair, and I think it's really there's a lot of resources for your pets, and they do demonstrations and art and other fun things all day long from 10 to 2 up at Riverview. So um, go check it out. Excellent. And last Saturday, we had the movie in the park down at Riverview Park, and there was hundreds of kids there, and it was just a beautiful night and a great night for families, and it worked really well. And we we crowned a new Miss Coon Rapids, and then we had the law enforcement event, appreciation event on Saturday afternoon from 2 to 11. There must have been thousands of people there over the course of those nine hours. I was there late, and I still get to hear you know, a couple of good old Denny Preston stories. So, <laughs> uh, Any other business? Yeah, so yeah. I, I've got one. So next Wednesday at 6.30, the League of Women Voters, it's going to be the candidate forum. So. You can come to City Hall and listen at 6.30 or that will be recorded so you'll be able to hear from all of the candidates for all, each of the wards. So one, two, four. Um, and then on Saturday the 30th, Hope for Youth has the darkest night of your life. It's a, a walk to raise awareness for homeless and that will be up at Bunker Hills. And you can register I think on their website or I think same day registration, but Friday night the 30th. So there's a 9 p.m. start or a 10 p.m. start to, to do the walk. And there's also a candidate forum here Monday night, uh, sponsored by the North Metro Mayors, for Senate District 37, maybe? I'm not sure. Representatives, anyway. Legislative. Yep. Any other business? Council Member Demmer, and then, and then, then go, then you. <laughs> uh, so we had that award for the sustainability practices and um, I just wanted to talk about that for one second so uh, you know it's easy to think sustainability just means sort of recycling and, and things like that but looking through the award it, it really is very holistic and it's, it's really an interesting thing to read through and see all the stuff that's going on in the city um, certainly the environmental practices are, are recognized such as the rain gardens and the um, uh, organic recycling but it goes into safety like the heart safe program it goes into um, uh, the Green Expo that we have, um, the, commu the communications, the parks, and the livability. I mean, it, it really is just sort of a fun thing to read through. Um, I was I surprised know. how many pages it was. Yeah, it's, it's 24 <laughs> pages. It's put together really well. And, uh, you know, the, um, the economic development, the, the homes for generation. So it, really a neat holistic view of all the stuff the city is doing and, and that broad view of sustainability that you have to be economically sustainable as well as environmentally sustainable. So credit to the people who put it together and, and it's neat to get recognized for uh, what's really quite a broad accomplishment. Ms. Lensmeyer, did you have something to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Absentee voting for the upcoming general election begins this Friday, September 23rd here at City Hall. And do we still need election judges? Actually, I could use a handful more, yes. And do they just come in to talk to you, or do they apply here at City Hall, or? Or they could email me at clerk at Okay, thank you. All right, what's the number, Johnson? September 30th, uh, the Anoka Tornadoes are hosting the uh, Coon Rapids football team at Goodrich Field, and so I invite you all to be there. <laughs> <laughs>
Not sure it'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Come and find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Want to anybody wrap this up or move to adjourn? Second. Motion by Demers, second by Clint to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We'll adjourn. Thank you.